everyone today we are going to start a page from Nice Town Halloween by Tatiana Bogima Stolova. I'm tilting the book so the light doesn't shine off the page. I think this page has got lots of really cute little elements that I felt like I wanted to colour. I thought it was nice as well because we've got little bits we can break it down into small bits so I thought that was good. I don't know whether I'll do the whole page, a few bits of it or what. I haven't quite decided but I have decided I'm going to start on the cauldron here so I'm just going to come in a lot closer so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Now, our fun little cauldron is sitting in a fireplace. I've got a little hook here so we can hang things in our ladle. Now, I've got my polychromos pencils out, so I thought I would just make a start and we'll see where we go, really. I'm going to actually start underneath with the fire. The first thing I'm actually going to do is the coal. And now, when you've got coal in an open fire, sometimes it glows red. Well, wood can anyway. I'm not sure about coal. I haven't got a coal fire, I've got a wood fire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my black and I'm going to do the bottoms of the pieces of coal in black, in quite a very dark, deep black, and then just fade them slightly towards the top. And then I'm going to I'll make them glow a little bit, hopefully with a bit of red. I don't know how well this is going to work. I've never tried it before. There might be a bit too much black, but we'll see. And then we'll colour the flames and then we'll be off. Now around here, I'm thinking there might be some ash. Now ash can be very pale grey or it can be quite dark. I thought if we go for the pale grey, which is what my ash tends to look like, um, in my fire. I'm just picking a red on I'm talking. Um, if we go for that then that might um, be useful. Um, that might look a good contrast between the black coal. Normally the white ash is from newspaper. This is 223 because my fire, the um, wood, this is deep red. The wood that I use in my fire is actually um, um, doesn't leave any ash but um, but the newspaper that I used to start it with does. So uh, I just get ash from paper. But if we do a similar thing here, there we go. It's our slightly red glowing coals. I like that. I don't know how easy it is to see. It's a bit tricky, the light in here today. Let's put a bit more in the middle, there we go. Um, I've got the blind shut, this really bright sunshine, but it's still leaking in. So I think my camera thinks it's brighter than it is on my lamp. But we'll see. Hopefully it's okay for you. Um, so I'm going to do the ash next. And I'm going to do quite a pale. I'm thinking I don't want it really, really pale because we won't see it. And I'm going to go for a cold grey too. And just put a little bit around and about where we've got these sort of lines that looks like might be indicating there's a bit of ash like this <clears throat> excuse me now with the fire I'm never sure to be honest where the fire should be lighter at the bottom or the top whether it should go from red down to yellow at the bottom or red at the bottom to yellow at the tip I tend to start darker at the bottom but because we've got these glowing coals I'm thinking maybe it'll look better if I do it in reverse it might just look totally wrong, but that's what I'm going to try and do. But I'm not going to use the really dark red that I've used already. I think I'll use an orange, just because um, the red will then stand out and look a little bit different. So I'm just sharpening my orange. This is the darkest orange I'm going to use, which is the um, dark cadmium orange. And I'm going to do that for the tips of all the little fiery elements. And these bits, these look, this looks like a leaf, this bit, and here too, like that, all the way across. I think that's it, yeah. And now I'm going to go to my next orange. This is the cadmium orange. I don't know how 
easy it is to see the name. Sometimes it's some pencils it's easier than others. So we're gonna just extend that colour a little bit on these small bits. That's it's done now. But on these ones that take a bit more. I've just realised how full my pencil sharpener is. And that didn't sharpen very well because it was too full. If your pencil sharpener is full, like if you've got one like this that collects the bits, when it gets full it doesn't sharpen very well. I'm going to stop the film and going to empty my sharpener. Bear with me. Right, I'm back now. It's always a bit of a dilemma at the minute which bin to put the rubbish in. Um, because uh, we've got a kitchen bin in our sitting room, which is not the nicest thing to have there. And it needs emptying actually, which I'm going to do soon. Um, but um, I'm just checking this colour. It is the dark chrome yellow. Um, I have pulled out some new um, polychromos because these are getting really short but I haven't switched them over quite yet. I tend to wait until it's impossible to sharpen them or if I want to do a big area. There's a small area, it doesn't give me cramp colouring with a small pencil but once I get a bigger area it does. And there we go. There's our fire. Now, I don't know what colour to do the stonework quite yet. I think what I quite like to do is to do the liquid in the cauldron green and the cauldron purple. I just think it's quite fun. Um, rather than doing a black cauldron, which although is sort of traditional, it's, you know, I, d I don't feel like I could do quite as much with black as purple. Now, our purples in the polychromos, we've basically got violet, purple, violet and mauve. Mauve being the darkest, which is where I am going to start. So this is the mauve. See, it's, already, it's another little baby one. And I'm going to think about where the cauldron is going to be darkest. And I'm thinking around this edge. If I make both the edges quite dark and lighter in the middle, it will help give, it, give us the impression that it's more rounded because obviously it comes out here. Same with the legs, I'm thinking if we go dark at the bottom and where there'll be shadow, also this will be sort of rounded so it might be darker on the edge like that. It's a little bit rough at the minute but it's okay. And then the bottom also. <coughs> Excuse me. My dryer's beeping. Hopefully the husband is going to go and sort it. So, uh, just taking the colour up. A little bit at the bottom of the leg there as well. Now we mustn't forget the inside and the rim. Now I think the inside's going to be really dark. I might add a little bit of black to this to make it look quite dark. I'm just going to put quite a dark layer on this bit below the rim, like that. And for the rim, I'm going to go darker there and less towards the middle. Darker here and less here. And the same on the back really, darker here and less here. Now I'm going to grab my black and add a few um, more elements of dark. So although I didn't want this to be completely black, adding a blue, a few black shadows can make a bit of a difference. So what I want to try and give the impression of is that this has got a sort of lip. And so I'm trying to put in some shadow like that. And the same here, I'm going to put a bit under here. And uh, I shall go over that with the mauve actually in a minute. Just so it looks a bit darker. I'm just going to, that bit I want really dark as well. Like that. And at the bottom. Not too much here because we don't want to mistake it for coal. Just a light layer. There we go. Now I'm going to go back into, in with my mauve. I'm going to go over this bit here again, make it dark and hopefully it will make it look less black and more purpley. 
like that. And then just emphasize this bit again. I don't want it too light. When we go um, over with the lighter purple, I don't want it really light. Now with polychromos, you do need patience and uh, to layer them up um, if you want intense colour. Um, I'm used to it. And I tend to do it with my other brands as well anyway, because it's just what I'm used to doing. But uh, not everyone is. Because with um, Prisma colours, you can push down hard and get a thick layer quite quickly and easily. But... Uh, I prefer to build it up more slowly. I find it means that if I change my mind, it's not quite the colour I want, I've got time to add in another colour, another shade, do it lighter, erase a little bit, etc. I've got over the tooth in purple. <laughs> Let's find an eraser. I know there's one here. Here we go. I may have to go over that in a white to make it really shiny. Now it's a bit purple. Um, I'm just checking. Now, what we do have over here is the lid of our pot. So I'm going to do that in purple too, so it matches. And I'm sort of doing it now while I remember. My plan really was to only do this little bit, but I think it sort of completes it, doesn't it? Now I'm just going to get a layer of purple down over the whole thing. I haven't really thought about where it's going to be lighter and darker, so I'm just having a think now. My plant looks pretty. What I'm going to do is colour over it and I shall... I don't know what I'll do with it because it's, it's just black. I might leave it. I'm thinking maybe it would be darker near the ground. Maybe more shadow at the bottom. Maybe here where it's near to the fireplace. So I'm ignoring that plant. I may um, go over it in a white pen or I may just leave it black. It's quite pretty as it is. I'm going to do the handle of the lid in a different colour just to make it look a little more interesting I suppose. I'm just fading that up really. Like that. Now I'm going to get my lighter purple and we'll... Um, which one should I go for? I'm thinking I might just go straight to the violet. The violet, oops, is 138. I'm trying to check because, excuse me, it's already quite small. So I'm just going to finish this rim bit up here first. Basically, I still want to see some paper through, but um, I just want to neaten it up. Really make it look nice and even. It looks, my bee looks a little shiny, which is absolutely fine. Let's concentrate on this leg next. So just getting those darker colours and fading there, where the light might be catching it, like that. Same here, I'm going to get some light on the top. And it's a bit tricky because obviously this fire might light up this bottom bit. But then with inside a little dark fireplace, it's knowing exactly what to do with the light, I'm not going to worry too much about it. I'm just going to do it in my own way. And uh, see how it comes off, really. So I'm trying to blend this in so that the two colours mix together at each at this end. I was going to say each end, there isn't very much at this end, but it's a little bit. And then sort of fade it towards the centre so have less layers as we go towards those cute little eyes. <laughs> Funny, aren't they? There we go. So it's Saturday afternoon. My son is um is live streaming so it's a good opportunity for me to come and make videos because nobody can talk. Um, so uh, it's fun um, I've been looking forward to doing a picture from this book all oh, year I was given this book last Halloween it was so close to Halloween when I got it that I couldn't really do many tutorials from it so this year I can I probably still started a bit late I sort of think it's hard because in the UK 
they don't really do Halloween very much. And we don't see, I think, um, we'll see things, Halloween things in the shops next week, I reckon. I think at the moment, people are being a little bit respectful. We've got our bank holiday on Monday, because um, it's, um, it's mid-September-ish. And I think once that bank holiday is over, we might just start to see a few Halloween-y things coming about. But as I say, people are being a bit respectful at the moment, so I think it's interfered a little bit with that. But that's okay. Um, so I haven't really been thinking about it, but then I noticed that some people had already started colouring Halloween-y style pictures. And I was like, oh my goodness, I'm getting a bit behind. So I need to get on. Mm -hmm. Now we've got our green. I want to do green in there. I'm trying to think what shade of green I want to do. Um, I think this might be that. This is the yellow green. I think I used that. So I'm going to go do that a little bit in there, look. And then this. I think it. I like this shade of green for um, Halloween. Anyway, I'm trying to do more layers on the edges of the cauldron. A bit less in the middle. I think it goes nicely with purple anyway. And it just looks really fun. Now the bubbles, I'm going to do in a slightly lighter shade. I'm going to do them actually in the... Ooh! <laughs> through my pencil in the light yellow green. My hands are really soft. We've got a water softener now since sort of getting our new kitchen organised. So it's not ready yet, but the water softener has been put in and put on. And um, my skin is soft. Uh, I can't get a grip of my pencils. So I'm going to do these. This is light thallo green, as I tried to say. Not sure if you caught it. <laughs> there we go. So that is our bubble. So you can see they're a slightly different colour. Now I'm going to do a little bit of silver for the ladle, the hook and the handle. Um, I tend to use my cold greys. I think I'm going to use this one. I'm trying to see. I think this is cold grey four. Uh, I just confirm for you. Two, three, three. Yes, cold grey four. To know your Roman numerals. Um, I might be able to get away with just using this col this colour. And I'm going to layer quite a bit up here under here. And then do less as I come to the top, leave some white for shine. With the handle, put more there. Now here, quite a bit. I'm just leaving that bit with none at the minute. Under here, and a bit at the top there for shine. I think I'm going to use a darker colour in a minute on top of that. It's not quite as I want it to be. But we'll do this one. So quite a bit at the bottom, a bit less coming up towards that pointy bit, and then a bit less towards that top there. Leave some white. Leaving white helps to give the impression of shine. So here I think I'm going to leave a white bit there. So I'm going to start here, fade it up towards there, and then do a little bit in here, fading up and down like that. Now it's not quite enough. I'm going to grab a darker one. Um, I'm going to use the cold grey 6 to add some darker colours. So under here I want the shadow darker. Layer this up a bit and under there. You could even use black for this to get it really dark but it's a bit risky. Black can be a bit dirty. I find grey isn't quite as dirty a colour. Somehow I'm going to put a little bit over each end just to make it look slightly more rounded, particularly underneath. Like that. Now for this one I'm going to put more under here. Like that. A bit more here. At the bottom. I'm not trying to make the ladle look rounded. I think sometimes they can be quite flat. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. Um, I am going to grab my black though and just do a little bit of shadowing under the handle here. And the purple. Might be a bit 
too much. But it's done now. Um, I think I'm going to use the black for this here too. I'm going to sort of fade it towards the top. It's probably the wrong way because the fire's at the bottom. But it's done now. <laughs> Oops. Never mind. Right. The stone of the fireplace. Um, I am thinking that I want to do that in a more browny grey, so I'm going to use the warm greys. I think that it would, it looks a bit different, to, will look different to these pieces then. I'm just thinking about how dark to go. I'd quite like to do this back bit quite dark, but this is black, so I need it to be lighter than black. So I think if I go for my warm grey 5, I think I'll be okay for this, just this bit, okay? I'm going to try and do a round and round movement. I want the colour fairly even. It doesn't matter if it's not completely, because stone is probably not completely even. But I think having a round movement gives a sort of stony texture. Because you miss a few bits, and it just somehow looks rough which is what I'm looking for there we go I think that's okay as long as we make the rest of this a little bit lighter then I think we'll be fine I am going to use this in here though I think it'll be dark in the bottom of there to emphasize that, emphasize that sort of chip that's there might do a bit here and here too. I am fussing, aren't I? <laughs> Let's fade. Right, next. Um, I need a lighter one. I don't know whether to go to four or down to three. Um, four might be a little bit too similar. So if we go down to three, then we're um, we're definitely going to get lighter. So here's our warm grey three. Oops, that's the wrong way around. I don't know. It's really hard to read it. So on this stone, I'm just going to bring the colour in towards the front. I'm thinking the lightest bit should be the bit closest to us, which is around here. So that's what I'm going to aim to do. Just gently fade by putting down less layers as you get towards that bit but we still need some colour there it's not metal it's stone so it won't be shiny but it'll just be less shadowy that's what I'm trying to do uh, I'm going to do all of this bit in this colour too I don't, this might camouflage our ash a bit Too worried about that. Make that bit a little bit darker there. A bit further in, a little bit darker and up there. Like that. Now for this bit, I'm going to go back to that round and round action. Try to layer it a bit more down here. Get a bit lighter here. I'm thinking about where the light, see this is further back so it would be darker here. That should get lighter towards the outside. It's quite fun isn't it? bit darker here near the cauldron light towards the edge there we go I think that looks quite cute 
Now we've got our brickwork to do around the outside. I'm just looking at the time, but we'll be fine. We'll get the brickwork done as part of this video. Um, I think I will start with the warm grey 5. Now I did use it for this. We may need something a little bit darker. What I'm going to do go along the bottom, make them darker at the bottom. My husband's just gone out. Confused. I think he's probably left something in the car. I'm guessing he might have left his phone in the car. I don't remember it being in the car though. I was in with him. I'm going to do a little bit of the lighter brown in that bit. Now I haven't made any decision about what colour to do the wall. Now if I look carefully, this is a we're inside a tree, <laughs> so I guess the wall is a wood colour. But I'm not going to worry about that yet. I'm just going to gently put down this colour for these bricks. They're going to have a light a bit at the top on each of them. As we go nearer the top, this bit is going to be less. So there's more of the lighter colour. Like that. Uh, well, I still have a little bit here, but it'll be more in this corner because of the angle of the brick. Like that. And we'll do the same sort of... This one's a bit straighter. Maybe like that. Uh, thinking there, that corner, I hope you can see what I'm doing. husband hasn't come back. Maybe he's nuttering to a neighbour. Maybe he's gone off to the um, art shop. We shall find out soon enough. And a bit down there. Then we'll grab our lighter grey. The uh, the warm grey three and do the tops. So start to go over where um, where we started to fade the other one and then just take it to the top. You'll want more layers where you've been overlapping and a bit less near the top of each stone. I've kept it quite simple. You could add quite a few colours. You could make each one slightly different colour. But it's just much easier to uh, to just keep it really straightforward keep them all just a couple of colours it looks more um, um, matching I guess is what I'm looking the word I'm looking for but, you know if this was my front room because obviously I'm gonna have a cauldron in the middle <laughs> I might want to use exactly the same stones around the fireplace to make them match my fireplace the stones are all pretty much the same colour so, uh, yeah, I think that's what we uh, do. Now we're almost at the end. Um, just having a little look at him. I think I need to do his eyes now. I'm tempted to do his eyes red, but I think, I, d I don't know. Shall we? Should we do them red? What, what have we got a red here? What's that? What what colour was that? Two, two, three. Uh, deep red. Deep red. Let's do them red. It looks a bit more Halloweeny, doesn't it? Now the teeth. I'm going to go over it in a white pen. This is a Posca PC One M. And I'm not going to go over the black lines because that's part of the mouth as well. But because I went over the teeth in quite a lot of purple, I thought it might be better to do that. Now I'm going to fiddle with the bubbles as well. Just put a little bit on the top to get rid of the black line at the top of each bubble. Like that and then I can just put a little shine line they're so small it's really not going to show up very much 
I'm going to put some dots in the water, like little baby bubbles. Like that. You could put a few above as well, like the sort of coming out. Like that one. Whoop. There we go. So there is our cauldron. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave that for today. Um, I am going to come back and do some other elements of this page. Um, I may not do the whole thing, but little bits and pieces, because there's such fun little autumnal and halloween -y elements, which I think will be good to colour. So for now, thank you for watching. I can't promise when the next one will be, by the way, it may not be tomorrow. Um, it depends what day of the week this goes out for a start. It might be planner day tomorrow or something like that. But uh, for now, thank you for watching. That was great fun. Um, I hope you have a great day and happy colouring.